first step is that we need to create a data extension. So if you come out to either Audience Builder, Contact Builder, or Email Studio Email, I prefer Email Studio Email and then Data Extensions for what I'm about to show you. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder within, which I did already create, and then we'll create the data extension. Choose a standard data extension, and let's give it a name of, I think it's Extracted Opens. We're gonna use that naming quite a bit, so I'm gonna save it to my clipboard. This data extension does not need to be sendable, although it could be, I guess, technically, um, but we're not going to make it sendable or testable. This is just for data. You can also select data retention options, which it's not a terrible idea um, to think about how many years you want to retain your information, weeks, months, etc. cetera. Um, but for purposes of today, I'm gonna to go ahead and leave this off. Create all of the different fields. I'm gonna do that really quickly and pause the video so you don't have to see it painfully. But we're gonna create all of the necessary data extension fields that will receive information from the extract. So a couple of key things about the fields that you're gonna create. Uh, the majority are gonna be number fields because they are IDs that come from the system. There are a couple that are text. So subscriber key, you wanna set the text and you can set it you know, to as high as 254. Make it appropriate to your account. So if you're, for example, connected to Sales or Service Cloud, then that might actually be 18 characters because it would be the contact key. Um, other things to call out is that you're gonna to wanna to set primary key for subscriber key, event date, and leave everything nullable with the exception of those two items that you're gonna set as the primary key. It'll just keep things safe for you. Um, you're also going to want to set event date as a date, and it looks like we've got you know number, number, date, text, number, number, and then I gave recommendations inside the blog post that specified the field lengths. So we're in a good place here. I'm just gonna hit create. And now that is created. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is come over into Automation Studio so that we can prepare that extract. So if we come into Activities, Data Extract, and choose Create Activity, we are going to pull information. I'm just gonna call that Extracted Opens once again and extract it opens. We're gonna put dot zip here. Um, just do it. <laughs> and then go ahead and hit tracking extract, click next. For account IDs, put an asterisk in there. Set the rolling range, especially the first time to 90 days, and then uncheck a bunch of things. So we want the opens for this particular use case. We probably don't want to include test sends, but we do want to make sure we're going to include user agent information. And if you do not see this option, you simply need to make a request for it to support. Um, you can select all the, the rest of this as the defaults, that's just fine, and then click next. Okay, so now we have an extract. We're gonna need a couple of file transfers, so we'll just create those really quickly now. The first file transfer is going to take the information that's been extracted and move it from the safe house. So let's just say extracted opens, move from the safe house. So our file again is going to be extracted opens.zip. Click next, hit finish. And while you're here, go ahead and create an additional file transfer. This one's going to be extracted opens, I'm going to do unzip. And then this time we are managing a file, we're going to be unzipping it. So we're starting off with extracted opens.zip again, and we're going to choose the option to unzip a compressed file. Click next, hit finish, and then go ahead and go out to um, create your automation. So I'm just going to go to Overview, New Automation, drag in the schedule. I'm going to drag in that data extract in this order and then the uh, file transfers. So I need two of those. I'm eventually going to need that import, but the first thing I want to do is make sure that this is functioning. So I'm going to come out and choose Data Extract, Extracted Opens. I'm going to choose a file transfer, which is the first one that moves it from the safe house. 
and then I'm going to choose the option that will transfer and unzip that file and put it out onto the SFTP. Give this a name, so I'll give it something like uh, Extracted Opens Automation <laughs> oh, with user agent data. Hit done, save, and then run it once. Select all, run. I'm gonna go ahead and run now even though I don't have my notifications set on there yet. But while that's running, I'll just talk about it. So if you didn't know, you can click activity and enter your email address to be notified of any failures. Once you put an email address in there and click done, then you also have another option to add a note which can be useful if you're setting some rules on your email account. So. Um, from there, you would hit save. I don't think it's going to let me because it's still running. Um, so ignore that red error. It's just because it was still running. Let's see where it's at. Give that just a moment. I'm going to come back to it. So while that is functioning, let's go ahead and go out and create our import activity. So I'm going to choose import file, create activity. This is going to be extracted opens. Once again, for my notification email, I'm going to put the same, click next, and I'm looking for the file that will have been created for extracted, I'm sorry, for opens.csv. So I'd love to be able to click there someday, but all I need to do is type in opens.csv. And if it finds that file, which it should, because I can see it right there, it's going to show it as green. Select all of these defaults and hit next. And then you're going to select the data extension that you want to use as the location to output the data. And that's the data extension you created in the earlier step. Click next a couple of times. Choose add and update. And you can keep the map by header row because as you can see, it's going to find all of the things that it needs. Hit finish and go back to your automation. So that has completed, which we also can see because that file was sitting there. And then I'm going to pop in this import file, extract it opens, hit save, and add some notations. Um, I'm not going to do all the typing here, but I just highly recommend that you would talk about that this is extracting opens with user agent data to safe house, click done, maybe move file from safe house to SFTP, and then unzip file on SFTP to create opens, oops, <laughs> dot CSV. And then finally, import opens.csv to created data extension. So hit save, and if you were to run once and just go ahead and hit that import file to click run, and give that just a moment. should reach that point where it shows the file there. It's running, give it just a moment as it's exporting. And then once it eventually stops, you're going to see something like this, where you come out to Contact Builder, go back out to your data extension that was created, open it up, and you're gonna find that the records include information on operating system and email client, in some cases, not all. But more specifically, it will and should include the information on Apple devices. So um, Apple Mail, if the email is being received in there, um, iPhone, iPad, etc. and so forth. So you can take this data and export it out if you wish to do a fancy pivot, or you can query this data now. If you schedule that automation that has now been created, so let me go out here. 
After it's run the first time, you needed the last 90 days, but you probably don't need to look back 90 days every time. So I'm gonna make a modification to this and just do a rolling range of the past seven days. I'm gonna hit next, click it a couple of times and save. I just save a lot. <laughs> and then on your schedule, go ahead and configure that. Choose the time that you'd like it to start. So maybe I want this to start at 11 a.m on the 24th and I want it to repeat weekly on a Saturday at 11 a.m. Sounds fun. And never end. And now once a week this file is going to um, or this process is going to go and run and grab the new data and append it on to the existing so you can you know continue to query that data extension as you see fit. So hit save, active, Activate, save one more time. It's just nice and you're done. Hope this video is super helpful. Uh, I do have an additional video that will just show how to use Package Manager to export the file, but this is truly giving you end to end what needs to be created and might be helpful if you ever needed to create another data extract of the information that's inside the system.